Hi friends, how are we doing today? So we are going to focus our energy on something a little bit different. It's called plot. Have you ever heard the word plot before? Kind of sounds like the word plop, like, but this is actually what happens in a story. So the events, the action. Um, so at the heart of the plot is the conflict. So the problem. And you know, a story without a problem doesn't really feel like a story, does it? So when authors write stories, um, the answer that we're looking for is what problem the character is facing. Um, there can be different types of problems. So there can be like a problem between two characters. There can be a problem between the character in itself. There can be a problem with the character and the society or what the world is around them. Or there can be a problem between the character and nature. So we are going to look at different types of books with this types of things. Now we know that problem is a story element, but now we're going to start to look at plot. So think of a story like a roller coaster. You have the start, and then once it comes up, the plot starts to get up to that problem, and then it goes back down to where the solution would be. All right, so today's book, we are going to be reading And Tango Makes Three. So this is about some penguins, if you couldn't already see. We have a little baby. And do they look like a family? Oh, absolutely, they look like a family. So let's see what this book talks about. It says, in the middle of New York City, there's a great big park called Central Park. Children love to play there. It has a toy boat pond where they can sail their boats. It has a carousel to ride in the summer and an ice rink to skate in the winter. Best of all, it has its very own zoo. Everyday families of all kinds go to visit the animals that live there. But children and their parents aren't the only families at the zoo. The animals make families of their own. There are red panda bear families with mothers and fathers and furry red panda bear cubs. There are monkey dads and monkey moms raising noisy monkey babies. There are toad families and toucan families and cotton top tamarind families too. So. These are the red pandas and the frogs and then the tamarinds at the bottom. We got some toucans and some other monkeys. And in the penguin house, there are penguin families. Every year at the very same time, the girl penguins start noticing the boy penguins and the boy penguins start noticing the girls. When the right girl and the right boy find each other, they become a couple. So just like how we find somebody, we start to date them. Two penguins in the penguin house were a little bit different. One was named Roy and the other was named Silo. Roy and Silo were both boys, but they did everything together. They bowed to each other and walked together and sang to each other and swam together. Wherever Roy went, Silo went. They sound like besties. They didn't spend much time with the girl penguins and the girl penguins didn't spend much time with them either. Instead, Roy and Silo wound their necks around each other their keeper, Mr. Granze, noticed the two penguins and thought to himself, they must be in love. Roy and Silo, Silo watched how the other penguins made a home. So they built a nest of stones for themselves. 
Every night, Royal and Silo slept there together, just like the other penguin couples. So there they are making their little beds of rocks. And every morning, Roy and Silo wake up together. But one day, Roy and Silo saw that the other couples would do something they could not. The mama penguin would lay an egg. She and the papa penguin would take turns keeping the egg warm until finally it would hatch. And there would be a baby penguin. So those are the little baby penguins. Now, do you start to notice what the problem might be? Try and think and see. Roy and Silo had no egg to sit on and keep warm. They had no baby chick to feed and cuddle and love. Their nest was nice, but it was empty. One day, Roy found something that looked like what the other penguins were hatching, and he brought it to their nest. It was only a rock, but Silo carefully sat on it and sat, oh, sorry. And he sat. When Silo got sleepy, he slept. And when Silo was done sleeping and sitting, he swam and Roy sat. Day after day, Silo and Roy sat on their rock. But nothing happened. Then Mr. Gramsay got an idea. He found an egg that needed to be cared for and he brought it to Roy in Silo's nest. Roy and Silo knew just what to do. They moved the egg to the center of their nest. Every day they turned it so each side stayed warm. Some days Roy and sat while Silo went for food. Other days, it was Silo's turn to care for the egg. They sat in the morning and they sat at night. They sat through lunchtime and swim time and supper. They sat at the beginning of the month and they sat at the end of the month and they sat all the days in between. I'm sorry if you guys can hear my kitty. He's a little hungry. Until one day, they heard a sound coming in from inside of their egg. Peep, 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 it said. Roy and Silo called back. Squawk, squawk. Peep, peep, answered the egg. Suddenly, a tiny hole appeared in the egg's shell. And then, oh, there's a little baby penguin. Crack. Out came their very own baby. She had fuzzy white feathers and a funny black beak. Now Roy and Silo were fathers. We'll call her Tango, Mr. Gramsay decided, because it takes two to make a Tango. Roy and Silo saw, taught Tango how to sing for them when she was hungry. They fed her food from their beaks they snuggled her in their nest at night. Tango was the very first penguin in the zoo to have two daddies. So instead of a mom and a dad, there's two dads. Soon, Tango grew strong enough to leave the nest. Roy and Silo took her for a swim, just like all the other penguin families. And all the children who came to the zoo could see Tango and her two fathers playing in the penguin house with the other penguins. Hooray, Roy! Hooray, Silo! Welcome, Tango! They cheered. At night, the three penguins returned to their nest. They were snuggled together and like the other penguins in the penguin house and all the other animals in the zoo and all the families in the big city around them, they went to sleep.
And that's it. What did we think? It's kind of different than what we're used to seeing in a book, right? So the problem that we saw was that the two penguins, they were unable to have a baby of their own because they were two boys, two males. But we started to see the problem kind of drift away. Now, if there wasn't a problem, do you think the story would have been as interesting? I mean, it might, but I think seeing the problem helped the story be more interesting, right? So I think that this story was more of a character versus nature, um, maybe even character versus society, because usually we see a girl and a boy penguin, but here there were two boy penguins. Now, it doesn't have to necessarily be penguins either in the world. There are a lot of families that can have two dads or two moms and they get a baby of their own, but just not from themselves. So the problem in the book showed us that even though there was something that was challenging, the family still loved each other. Because remember, that's what a family is. It's how people love each other. So I thought that was really sweet that the penguins got their very own baby. Um, but try and think of a problem that you face in your life and see what kind of problem is it? Is it within you and another person? Is it a problem with something that you're dealing with yourself? Is it something that other people might view you as different? And maybe that's a problem or maybe something out in nature, uh, maybe your house, who knows? Maybe there's a problem there, but try and see if there is something there that could have a solution just like the penguins because we'll get into solution tomorrow. But thank you for listening to the story with me and I hope that you guys have a great night.